Hello, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon with my friends from policemagazine.com. Today's strategy and tactic tip is going to be on enhancing our communication skills. Guys, communication skills has a tremendous amount of value. Now let's talk about the value. Because if, if our officers don't see the value in it, which a lot of times we don't, so, you know, if we don't see a value in something we're being taught, the retention will not occur. Because we won't have that neurological activity and we won't have that retention. So let me share with you the value of what effective communications will do for you. First of all, have you ever had a violent altercation and next thing you know you have civilians jumping in that fight to help you secure somebody? I've had that several times. I guarantee you've had it several times. My, my colleagues have had it several times. Another thing is when it comes to presenting our, court to, uh, our case to court, uh, civil litigation, we always have people making assessments from the jury box of what, we, what they believe. Now, again, don't believe what the media represent to us. They still look at it as, at this shining array of a warrior of what you are, all right? Now, we diminish that, unfortunately. We can diminish that with a four-second contact. It's what I call hero to zero. Remember, most of the public already views you as the hero you are. But can you imagine you being a, an individual of the public and you pull up to an officer asking for Main Street directions and you get this. Excuse me, officer, where's Main Street? Main Street, let's keep going straight. You gotta drive away after four seconds and make an assessment like, what a jerk. Now you pull up to another officer. Oh, Main Street? Oh, just keep going straight right up the road. You can run right into it and you'll have no problem. All right? I'll be here all day if you, if you get lost. That person drive away is going to have a completely different thought process and recall of than the first person did. Those negative impacts, you've all experienced it. We've gone to restaurants and some like that person is just a fantastic uh, waiter. This person is very professional compared to the opposite. Unfortunately, what do we retain longer? The negative aspects of it. So one, we've had people jump in willing to risk their own personal safety on your behalf. Two, they're in jury boxes making decisions on your credibility. Don't diminish it within a four second contact. All right? Now, say right here in a cell block, You're, you have to arrest somebody here. Let's talk about the value of treating a prisoner with respect and dignity. All right, not this, put your hands here. Hurry up, roll your fingers. None of that stuff, all right? Here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, my friend. Listen, I, will, I have to fingerprint you. I have to process you. But the better you are and the more gentleman you are, I'll get you out of here as possibly as fast as I can. I'll give you another anecdote. A buddy of mine that used to work here, uh, the same thing. We had a big local guy, always get into scraps, all right? Now he's being arrested, and this officer, listen, you, you be a gentleman, I'll fingerprint you. I'll, I'll, I'll get you out of here as possibly as soon as I can. Let me get you a soda. Food and water calms the nerves for some people, cigarettes, whatever. But you're treating the person with dignity and respect. So he arrested him, booked him. The individual was on his way. But he fulfilled his promise. Now, he probably realized that he was almost home, and then he pulls up, but he still fulfilled his promise. Say, go ahead, I'll jump in. I'll give you a ride. The guy goes, no, I'm all set. I'm right here, but thank you. It wasn't about a month and a half to two months later, the same officer goes to a fight in progress, runs behind the house, and it turned out to be like a big keg party, 200 people there, a lot of people all intoxicated. Now the officer gets there, his backup is still on his way, next thing you know, they're starting to surround this officer. What do you do now? Out of the crowd comes this suspect. Bam! Pushes everybody out, stands right in front of the cop. Says, anybody wants to fight with him, they got to get through me first. You might want to get more people here. True story, all right? Another example of how treating people with respect and courtesy are willing to protect you. Now, Malcolm, Grad Malcolm Gladwell wrote the book called Blink, which is a phenomenal book, by the way. Within the book, he talks about a study uh, done pertaining to doctors that are sued, all right? Now, they have determined that the doctors that spent 2.5 to 3 minutes more per patient were substantially less likely to be sued and it had really little to do with the performance of what they were doing. It's on how they were treated. And of course, and then a, a, my law enforcement team will say, yeah, but you know, KD, we understand, but they don't arrest people. And I'm like, well, you know what? You didn't arrest those people in that jury box, did you? And those are the ones that might be just pulled right up to you and asked for directions. 
I had another individual in a, in a meeting I was in not too long ago. Now he comes up to me, he's a businessman. He goes, oh, hi, Kevin, how are you? Nice to see you again. Hey, how things? He goes, I had a call to police the other day. I said, really, share it with me. He goes, well, I caught two people breaking into my, uh, into my garage. I chase after them, and I call the police while I'm in my vehicle. Now they fled into the woods, so I stopped because I'm not chasing in the woods. As soon as the officer pulled up, he said, the officer goes, what are you going to do now that you catch them? He goes, why don't you let us do our job? So now here it is a civilian, our citizens, calling for help. Guys, he responded emotionally, not intellectually or intelligently, right? So he was under a lot of, you know, uh, the typical four brain shutting down, the emotional brain taking over and chasing the suspects. But the only thing he could recall and the only thing he wanted to talk about how it was disrespectful, he was treated by an officer they called. Now that's how long-term memory these people will remember those interactions. Guys, let's get rid of this treatment. Treat people with dignity and respect of which they deserve. I've proven to you and I can prove it to you countless times that they are willing to jump in. They want to adhere to you and they will judge and make decisions based on what they believe from you. Don't be a hero to a zero. Enhance your communication skills. Treat people with the dignity and respect they like. Like I said, in closing, Napoleon said, an iron fist is always better served up in a velvet glove. I'm Kevin Dillon. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.